Hi guys and welcome to TechFurb. Today we're going to be doing a streaming PC, but we're not doing a normal kind of streaming PC. We're going to be taking a, uh, well it's an old Lenovo, it's a Core i5 2400 based system, and we are going to turn this thing into a streaming PC. Okay, so why am I going here and taking a OEM AF, just small form factor PC? This is painful things. Uh, this particular Lenovo model that I have here, this is not all Lenovo's. Do not take this as a blanket. Uh, do, do not even follow what I'm doing, to be honest. This is like a one-off build. Uh, it's just there for your guys' curiosity. Uh, so I noticed that this board actually is a micro ATX board. It has all standard ATX mounts, so it will use the normal ATX power supply. Uh, all the motherboard jumpers, so like USB 2 headers, USB 3, well, it doesn't have USB 3, but all, all the motherboard headers, like even your power switches and everything, they're all bog standard. So that means that we'll be able to gut the motherboard out of this case and drop it straight into a normal ATX case back here. So uh, that's fantastic. And being a streaming PC, it needs a, you know, dedicated uh, card to do gaming streaming at the heart of it. And that's what this little guy here is. Uh, I've done a preview video of this a little while ago. Uh, it's the Ava Media C8985. Um, it's a good little chip. It's entry level, but it does do 1080p 30 frames per second. Uh, so that is perfect for what I want. Uh, I don't need 60 frames per second streaming. Uh, I'm happy with 30 frames per second. So that's why I went with this guy. Uh, now, on the RAM side, we'll be running 16 gigabytes of DDR3. Uh, we'll also be running a 120GB uh, SSD as a boot drive and a 1TB hard drive for storing all of the streams that we're recording. Uh, and the CPU in this bad boy is actually an i5-2400. Now, uh, in the case of a streaming PC, when it's only single purpose in life is to do streaming, you can get away with a second generation i5. Uh, I've actually done a streaming PC with a 6600, like a Q6600, so I'm talking uh, Core 2 Duo era. So, uh, yeah, that, that's, that was pretty amazing uh, to be able to get that working. Uh, so with the little i5 in here will be golden. So, that's the master plan. Uh, we're going to gut this guy, put it in this case. Uh, we've even got an OEM Windows 7 Pro license that I can reuse. Uh, so that's phenomenal, and uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get this guy built. Alright guys, so we've got the motherboard out now. This is it here. Uh, like I was saying, it's the ATX model, uh, very dodgily holding. We've got the pins down the bottom there. That's for all the uh, power connectors and everything, where my finger is pointing just down there. Uh, and we also have the power mount there and up there. So, bit of RAM in the board. Uh, it's untested. I'm not actually going to use that RAM because I don't know what it is. Um, but we're ready to put this in the case now.
Okay guys, so build's finished now, it's all put together. Uh, to be honest, this is the easiest OEM build I've ever had to do. Uh, it genuinely didn't feel like an OEM build, which is uh, an amazing thing for me to say. So, uh, we're going to power this guy on for the first time. I should have repasted the CPU, but I'll probably do that after the fact. Uh, let's just see if I've wired it up correctly and uh, see if it boots. Please hold. <laughs> I wired it up correctly, it's fired up. Uh, let's see if we get a signal. Hey, hey alright, so look at that, Lenovo thinks into the whole deal in a uh, Micro ATX case, so straight into Windows as well, that's a good sign. Uh, window, this Windows 10 install actually is set up for the uh, previous streaming setup that I was using. Uh, I was running it with an i7 just to try it out. Uh, but I decided that, hey, I had the Lenovo systems here, and why not use one of them as my streaming system? So, that's kind of why we're running this guy here. So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, now, as a surprise part of this video, uh, you guys have probably been watching a live stream. So, let's cut over to some uh, live footage now. Hello, guys. Uh, this is actually some live footage. Uh, I am recording off the stream PC at the moment. The camera that I'm using is my normal Panasonic camera. Uh, the picture quality is just a fraction worse than what it normally is. Uh, I don't know how this is going to wash out in the um, YouTube compression algorithm because I can tell you firsthand that the videos on YouTube don't look as good as the native videos that are coming off the camera normally. So, uh, yeah, that's a thing. Now, uh, yeah, so it's going from the camera through the micro HDMI cable blah blah thing. It goes into the capture card and the capture card is now capturing this through uh, OBS Studio. So audio is also coming off the camera. I'm still using the shotgun mic, which is the Rode Video Micro. Uh, fantastic little microphone I picked up by the way. I should probably do a review on that. And if you guys do watch my content regularly, I have switched over that to that microphone uh, quite recently actually. We've only probably done the last few videos on it. Uh, you also might notice that there's a bit of an echo in this room and I am working on that. I do have some soundproofing foam coming. Uh, so that is going to be resolved. Now, uh, you've been watching a bit of content of me. <sighs> well, it's pre-edited. This is not edited now. We're uh, streaming live effectively. Uh, I was wanting to upload the uh, video as a live stream. So I was just going to do a straight live stream with the actual video running as a live stream and then cut over to this footage but uh, I thought it through and then I realized that YouTube doesn't actually like live streams a whole lot you don't get a whole lot of views on live streaming unfortunately uh, so I couldn't do that cool thing because my channel is not big enough and I want you guys to be able to see the content so uh, normal video this is footage off the capture card as I said a million times over and over and over and over again sorry for the lack of editing uh, I wanted this as a one take solution so uh, the capture card that I'm using oh that is so trippy I put the back of the box upside down Anyway, uh, so the capture card we're using, if I had not already mentioned, is the Abominia Live Gamer Live Live Gamer HD Lite. Uh, it is the 985C variant. Uh, it is a good little capture card. Uh, I said I would do a full review, so here is my full unedited review of that. Uh, well, capture card. So. I've been using it, I've uh, been using it for capturing game capture, so if you guys have been seeing some game capture integrated into the videos recently, it's going to be off that capture card. And I must admit that it is hit and miss with this capture card, uh, capturing 1080p footage. So it's Achilles heel, is it only does 1080p 30 frames per second. And when you're doing game footage, uh, if it's a game like, I don't know, let's say GTA 5 or anything that's not really high intensity, it's fine. It, you don't notice the, uh, the, it's not noticeable to pick up the lag in the video. Uh, but if you are looking at a game like Doom or F1 or Dirt Rally or anything that requires high frames per second for it to feel fluent, that's when the capture card comes uh, unstuck. So if you're hoping to use this guy to be the uh, next PewDiePie or whoever the latest game streamer is, I'm sorry, I know he's kind of on the down now, he's, he's not as big as what he used to be, but uh, yeah, if you want to be the next big streaming uh, person, this is absolutely not the card for you. Uh, however, that is not what this card is targeted for. If you are looking to just get into the market 
and just get a capture card. You want to get something that just does an okay job. Uh, this is going to have you covered. So I do all my footage at 1080p. Uh, however, this does do, yep, it does do 720p 60 frames per second. So that is pretty awesome. Um, I don't do 720p streaming purely because the camera I use is a 1080p camera and I want to put 1080p content up on YouTube. So if I was doing live streaming at 720p, this capture card would be perfect. And uh, I think a lot of you guys actually do do that anyway. So uh, yeah, uh, anyway, so that, that's, that's kind of the caveat to the capture card. It's there if you were looking to get into game streaming, um, but I wouldn't recommend it if you are going for high-end game streaming. Now, if you're someone like me, who is a YouTuber who wants a capture card to do the odd live stream where you do a news segment or, I don't know, whatever you want to do. You want to do a weekly live Q&A with your, you know, your, your regular viewers. Uh, this capture card is perfect. Uh, you don't need to spend a heap of money on an Elgato card or a heap of money on the higher end version of this that does the 60 frames per second, you don't notice the quality difference between uh, 60 and 30 frames per second for just static footage like this. Uh, so that is a bonus. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much all I've got about this capture card. Uh, I also got it to run with a Q6600, so that's a Core 2 Quad, uh, as I mentioned at the start of the video, and it ran really well. I did have to lower the encoder to, I think it was faster or fastest. It was a pretty low preset I had it on, but it could do it, which is which is amazing for a processor that was manufactured in like freaking 2007, so 11 years ago now. Uh, so it'll run with hardware as old as that, and I've also run it with an i7-3770. Bit higher than the, car, uh, the CPU that I'm using at the moment, it was on a, I think it was on the preset above this one. Uh, currently I think I'm running on the fastest preset, or faster preset, I can't remember. Uh, but. Yeah, so overall it's a good capture card, and as long as you have a system that's not a complete and utter dinosaur, you should be pretty good with it as well. So uh, overall, I think the solution I've come up with here is basically, well, what have we got? We've got a old cheapo Lenovo workstation you pick up for probably a couple of hundred bucks, capture card for 115 Australian. Remember, I live in Australia, so the pricing will vary for your region, it'll probably be cheaper. Uh, and uh, what else do we have in there? We're chucked in a GPU. But overall, I would say the guts of this build would have cost three, four hundred bucks to put together if you really know what you're doing and where the bargains are. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Leave a like if you liked it. Leave a dislike if you disliked it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this second part of the video. It's uh, more of a raw me sitting in front of the camera doing a one take. And uh, yeah, so comments down below as well if you've got anything to add, any questions about this capture card, you want to ask me anything about it, you're thinking of getting it, let me know. And uh, I will catch you guys in the next video. And of course, do not forget to subscribe if you watch my content regularly. It does help. Uh, so, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll catch you in the next video. See, normally in this part of the video, I'd, I'd edit it out. But I'm going to have to click the mouse. So, uh, bye!